actually are on vacation, maybe we should uh, uh, have a worship team come from outside of here. And uh, I'm not sure now. You know, I, I just, I love Chris and his family and um, what an addition they are to our church. You know, it, it's just wonderful. Uh, a few announcements. Um, went out and bought two more tables. Uh, now we have six. Seems like this thing is talking back at me. Are the monitors on or something? No. No, okay. Well, it was just my imagination once again. Don't quit your day, Joe. Ever since uh, I sold our Harleys, they were actually mine because they were too crazy for Judy to ride on, but uh, I've had a desire to be able for me and my wife to go out and ride, get in the wind again. But uh, I'm not as stable on my feet as I used to be, and I'm afraid I may not be as stable, you know, with that bike and with Judy on the back. I just would rather not be on two wheels. And so I've been praying for a project uh, that. Uh, uh, I, I could put together so me and Judy could go out on like Sunday afternoons or whatever and go for rides and stuff and so I've uh, I wanted to, to, ha to have a trike and that's three wheel motorcycle and uh, so I put it online I put it out there that I'm looking for a project a trike project and uh, a friend that I haven't seen in 12 or 14 years answered it and he has a trike that's been sitting in his carport for 11 years. And uh, he told me to come up and, and get it and we'll talk about it. And so uh, that's what I did on Monday. After, uh, after our pastor's meeting on Monday, I took off for Ella J. And uh, I drove a long time to get to Ella J. I was thinking, oh, I'm going to hit the border sometime pretty soon. I have to show my passport. It's a long ways away. But anyway, uh, we ended up getting it and bringing it back down here. And, and my son and I have been tearing it apart and checking it out all week. And um, the motor's in great shape. So uh, there's a lot of little things that, uh, that we need to, to fix to get it to where me and Judy can spend time together. You know, and so I'm... I'm excited about that. Uh, Pastor Gerald mentioned something to me this morning. We had a really good time this morning. Uh, he told me about uh, a piece of equipment that translates English into Spanish. And if we had that, then what is said from the stage would be on one of the monitors in Spanish. I thought, man, that is awesome. And, uh, and I'm thinking, well, because we're reaching out to all people. I was thinking, well, maybe we should have one that translates Spanish into English so that everybody could hear in their own language. You know? And so I'm, I tell you, I'm real excited about that uh, especially the part that translates into Spanish so that everybody that's here could hear the message of the gospel. And guys, that, that's our mission as a church is to reach out to all people. You know, all people. And guys, there are more Hispanics in Hall County than there are Anglos. We have got to reach out. And God is, has brought together... Uh, uh, Gerald and uh, what's his name again? Reuben. Reuben. Oh, it's a hard name for me to remember. I should think of a sandwich, a Reuben sandwich. But anyway, uh, and uh, those guys have come together and uh, uh, everybody knows that Reuben went through a major crisis a couple of weeks ago and his wife got in a car wreck and lost both of her legs. And so um, uh, Reuben uh, may need some help. And 
what's amazing to me is God would send us a pastor with a heart to give. And so the first thing that Gerald wanted to do was go over and meet with Reuben and, and give him the help he needs, whatever he needs. And so that already happened. And uh, I tell you, man, I am blessed. Uh, Reuben is a great man. You know, he's got a, a, he's got a great heart. He loves the Lord. And even through this crisis, God is bringing people around him to uh, encourage him and love him and help him. So that, that's really good news. Uh, be praying about that. Um, I'm going to meet with Pastor Gerald and discuss ministry opportunities because our church needs to be 100% on board with whatever God has got planned for this place. 100%. And that's what I am. I'm 100%. If, if, if somebody, the goal is for people to receive the gospel and to change their life. And so uh, I, I'm excited about the opportunity to reach the Hispanic community in their own language. So um, anybody have any announcements? Be praying for the Gerlach family? No? Okay. Uh, I want to thank Pastor Matt for bringing donuts this morning. Yeah. I want to thank Pastor Gerald and Marjorie for every week bringing us extraordinary, awesome food for our church. I've never seen anything like it. And remember the recipe. Huh? The recipe for today for that. I have to let mm, know what the recipe is. Well, we don't need the recipe. We have you. <laughs> we'll come to your house and eat it. <laughs> So, uh, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for our church family. Father, we ask that you would bless the Gerlach family, give them rest so that they can continue on the work that you've assigned for them. Thank you for those that are here. Father, thank you for those that are out there on the internet that will be hearing the message today. Uh, we, we pray your blessings on this house and on each person that's here. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Oh! Okay, Mikey. Today is chapter 3 of Jonah. I love the book of Jonah. And the reason is, is I'm like Jonah. You know, sometimes I know what God wants me to do, and I don't do it. I'm probably the only one here that has that problem. But uh, I'm getting better. I'm getting better, you know. Uh, now I just, I, I trust God to do what He wants to do through me. And uh, whether it's foreign or not, I, I just step out in faith knowing He will, uh, he will handle it. And so, uh, this last uh, 10 plus years has, has been amazing for me because it's been a God thing. Trusting God every week for His uh, provision, uh, and uh, uh, I, I just trust that thousands of people have heard the gospel message on the internet coming out of this little church, and I'm, I'm really blessed about that. Jonah is a prophet of God. In the Old Testament, God spoke directly to the prophets like I am speaking to you now audible audible hearing God communicating with God straight there and back Jonah knew God's voice he had a personal relationship with God he was a prophet the great thing about the book of Jonah is it tells me that even somebody that is linked to God that much can still mess up. And when we see that happening, we don't want to, we, we, we can't put down pastors or leaders that bump their head, 
that, that uh, end up doing the wrong thing. We have got to lift them up just like God lifted us up out of our mess. And we see the book of Jonah. There's so many books that encourage me. Jonah, Job, um, you know, that, that, that people trust God. And in the end, uh, uh, God reigns. I got the news that uh, yesterday morning, a good friend of mine, Jason Nave, who has been on staff at Blackshire Place, um, he's got five kids. His 23-year-old son was killed in a car wreck yesterday morning. And uh, guys, I gotta tell you, Jason is a champion for God, but that's gotta hit hard, you know? And, uh, and so he is still trusting God uh, not understanding why his son was taken, but even in adverse conditions, we need to have our focus on the Lord Jesus. I like to call it tunnel vision on him. No matter what's going on around us, no matter if gas gets to $10 a gallon, our focus is on him and he will sustain us. You know, we can't, we can't drive as much as we used to, but we can still drive. So, but Jonah said no to God. Can you imagine somebody saying no to God? Uh, so much so that he took off. Now, I know that Jonah knew in his heart that he couldn't go where God can't find him. But that's what he chose to do, is to do the opposite of what God told him to do. And I can relate to that because that has happened to me before when I knew what God wanted me to do and I just did the opposite. Sometimes it's just somebody that you see at Walmart or Home Depot that you know that you've got something to say to them that would bless their heart and you don't do it. It's little things like that, guys. And so I love the book of Jonah because Jonah took off the opposite direction. He went directly opposite of where God wanted him to go. And he knew that God wanted him to go the other way. And yet he chose to say no to God. I would, uh, I, I think all of us have probably done that uh, some in our Christian life, but we need to be getting better. And uh, one of the things that we need to understand is God's will and our will are two different things. And so usually when God wants you to do something, it's not something that you would normally do, you know. Uh, I wouldn't normally leave my roots on the West Coast and come to Georgia. That's just not something I would have done on my own. But this is where God wanted me, you know. And so uh, I'm, I'm blessed. I, I've got a, a wife that will follow me around the country. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm, I'm just blessed. So it's interesting to see how God dealt with Jonah and how God has dealt with us when we're going away from his will because Jesus is Lord. He's going to have his way eventually. And so what's amazing is Jonah hired a uh, uh, a transport boat to take him the opposite direction and God brought a storm and when we're heading in the wrong direction in our lives it will be stormy it will be stormy uh, but God will sustain us even through those we belong to him and he pays his child support he's going to take care of us and just like bringing correction to your kids is not a pleasant thing God bringing correction to us is probably not going to be a pleasant thing. And Jonah is evidence of that. And so uh, with the ship in a big storm and everybody on the ship knew that there was something wrong, you know, and who brought this disaster on us? Isn't that something? Who? And, uh, and then it fell to, uh, to Jonah. So they ended up throwing Jonah in over the overboard to get rid of the problem. But God wasn't done with Jonah. And so the Bible says that 
uh, as he went down in the depths of the sea, God sent a great fish to swallow him whole. Not chew him up, just to swallow him whole. And, uh, and that, to me, that is really significant because can you imagine what it would be like to be in the belly of a fish? Uh, well, here comes... Chris's truck. But anyway, um, so can you imagine what it would be like? I mean, do we all know what is in our stomachs. Acid and all of this stuff, food that's being processed and everything. And Jonah is experiencing that firsthand because he's in there. I, you know, I can't even imagine surviving just that. But God, but God, God sustained him in, uh, in that. And so it ended up that God had the fish swim right back where God wanted him to go and puke him up on the beach. You know, you guys know what puke is like? Any of you guys that have had uh, a lot of drinking in your life like me, you know, you know what puke is like, that's nasty. All the acids and stuff, and here he goes, pukes him up on the beach, and there he is laying in all that mess. <sighs> God had his way. God had his way. And so now we're going to, in, in chapter 3, we're going to take it from there, and uh, I just hope that you guys can go away from... Uh, go away from uh, our services here, our time together, with a different viewpoint of, uh, of the scriptures. Jonah goes to Nineveh against his will, right? Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Now, he had already told Jonah to go to Nineveh. And Jonah said no. Now, God brought Jonah to Nineveh uh, in his own way. So God spoke to him again. You know, this is really great news for us is because even when we're rebelling, God will still communicate with us. He doesn't give up on us. We belong to him. And some of you may have had rebellious kids, but don't give up on them. And so God said, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Do what I tell you to do. That's it. And isn't it neat that God had this personal uh, relationship with Jonah that he spoke to him audibly. Jonah knew his voice and Jonah re would respond to that. Now Jonah has just went through a life-changing, a life-transforming situation. He was in the belly of that fish. Three days. Guys, can you imagine that? Three days. And so now God is telling him again. God's not going to give up on us. God gave him the message a second. It was the same message as he gave him before. Go to the city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah didn't feel like this, that the Ninevites were worthy of God. He had, make that he had made that decision that they were just way too evil and wicked for him to go there and proclaim the gospel. But God had his way. And so it says here that now, after being in the belly of that fish and being puked up on the beach, it says here in verse 3, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. He went from the beach into the city. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it by foot, on foot. That's almost like bigger than Gainesville, right? Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming. This was the message that God told him to tell. Now, God had already been working on the ears of the Ninevites so that they would hear the message and respond to it, even though 
we don't see very much fruit in our lives when we're speaking the gospel, God is in it, and there will be fruit. And the message was, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Now, right, if, if he had just went in there without God, they would have probably stoned him to death. Because he's telling them that your city is going to be destroyed in 40 days. That's bad news, right? That's bad news. Verse 5, the Ninevites believed God. Check this out. Jonah was a prophet. And the words he spoke were the words God told him to speak. And when they heard it, it wasn't just Jonah, but they were hearing the words of God. Oh my gosh, how powerful is that? A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. They responded just to the words that God told him to speak. God tells us what to speak in, in the Bible. That's why we need to know the scriptures. Verse 6, when Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes. Check this out. All this is happening because people are believing that God spoke through Jonah. God spoke through Jonah and the people listened. Took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. This is the king. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. Okay, now the king is going to speak in response to what Jonah just said. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let the people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God, big G God. The fervent prayers of a righteous man avails much. And these people are crying out now, but remember, these are wicked people. But because of the words of God being spoke to them, and that God had been tilling the soil of their hearts, that's the only way there can be a response. Let everyone call urgently, plead with God, pleading with him to save their city. Let them give up their evil ways. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Stop it. We have the power to stop it. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. It's the same today. God is telling us to cease, to stop our wicked ways and follow him. He's telling us that today. It's not going to be comfortable. Doing God's will is uncomfortable in our carnal mind. But guys, it's God that's doing the work through us. He's not depending on our talents or our experience to tell people about Him. He's simply depending on us being obedient to the Word of God. Obedient. Putting ourselves aside, tunnel vision on Jesus, and guess what? Stuff is going to get done. Stuff is going to get done. If we simply put God first. God speaks to us now through His Word. 
through his Holy Spirit that is in every person who is saved. In, in the scriptures, God, the scriptures say, you stiff-necked people, now he's talking to Christians, God, you stiff-necked people, you always resist the Spirit that is in you. See, the Spirit can't be any, in anyone that doesn't belong to God. But we can resist. That's what Jonah did. And that's what led to the whole thing. But it is an amazing testimony of the power of God and what he will do, the limits that he'll go to to get us back on track. He'll do whatever it takes. He sustained life in the belly of the fish. Guys, there's no oxygen down there. You know, the, nothing to breathe, nothing to protect him from all the acids in the stomach of that fish. But God did it. Surrounded him and protected him until he got that fish got back to Nineveh and discharged him on the beach. Now, I've never seen anybody have to go to that length, but I've seen God spank a lot of people that were his. God takes care of his child support. He's going to take care of us. But when we get offline, I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit is there to say, ah, you need to get back on course here. You know, you're getting off in the wrong direction. I'm thankful for that. Because in and of myself, I don't have the knowledge of what it takes to be on track with him. But his spirit that's in me does. So let's be a people that will say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever it is, whatever it is, God is really preparing us to reach into the Hispanic community. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Get it done because everybody is of equal value to God. And everybody needs to be of equal value to us. Because these are God's kids. These are God's kids. And so to wrap it up in verse 10. When God saw what they did, God saw the response to his word being proclaimed. And we still have the same mission today is to proclaim his word to the people. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways... He relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. It's God's will that nobody would perish, but everybody would come to repentance. That's what God wants. It's sad to say that that's not going to happen because most people in the world are not going to heaven. Most people. You know, you, even though we say we're a Christian nation, most people in America are not saved. They say they are. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. We need to be examining the fruit of people. Are they, are they doing this for God or are they doing this for self-gain? There's a lot of that stuff going on out there now. But as for me in this house, we need to be on target with God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. That's the only thing we can say in response to God. Yes. Yes. When we say no, we get a spanking. I don't know about you, but I don't like spankings. I don't like that. So I would like rather have God's blessing on us, on me, on this church. And he's doing that. He's doing that. We get to speak all over the world on the internet every Sunday. How cool is that? And when we have somebody up here that is speaking, or whether it's Hispanic or English, we're going to have a TV monitor with the words in their language. I just can't believe in my heart how awesome that is to be able to do that. Technology is advancing to where everybody in the world will be able to hear the gospel in these last days. We're going to do our part. We're going to do our part. God will. Sp God changed the city of Nineveh through one rebel. Finally, the rebel said yes. 
God changed an entire huge city. What do you think he's going to do with us? If we simply say, yes, Lord, right from the gate. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen? Amen. Father, we're grateful for your, your scriptures. Thank you for, we don't have to guess, Lord, that you speak to us through your word. Lord, may we be eager to carry those words out into the community. Lord, thank you for uh, the best that we have, that everywhere we go, people will know that we belong to you. And so, God, I pray there be uh, much fruit from that, Lord, that planting seeds in your name. Lord, I pray that you'd bless everybody out there on the Internet, Father, that says yes to you. May this message be an encouragement to all. I thank you for the book of Jonah, Father. I thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Father, I also thank you for the, the offering, Lord, that, uh, that you bring every week, Lord, that it meets our needs for the week. And Father, we're so grateful that you have sent someone to us, not only to do ministry, but to minister to us with food. Father, we get great meals every Sunday because your heart is in other people. So thank you for that, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.